Well, we have more and more jazz education going on now than ever at the high school and college levels. Uh, and access to, you know, online jazz education and Jamie Abersole recordings and play along uh, kind of things. Uh, has it also contributed, has that contributed to the homogenization of of jazz and and uh, is it um, hurting the originality at all uh, of the younger players coming up because of the access to a lot of methods um, that we never had before and a lot of uh, clinicians going out and doing this kind of thing. I hope you agree. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about the, the fact that we live in in an age when the technology is allowing young people to have access to things that uh, they may not otherwise have have access to. In other words, YouTube, if you go on and Google Duke Ellington or Count Basie or, or Benny Carter or uh, Jimmy Lunsford or anyone throughout the history of the music, Ella, Billie Holiday, you can, you know, you have access to things that when we were in school we didn't have. You re we really had to search it out. So, I mean, if you don't have, uh, the New York jazz scene outside your door and you're in somewhere else where it's a bit harder to hear live music then I think to remember that those, those um, uh, uh, YouTube videos are available and other things like that and read the biographies of the great musicians so you can start to get an idea of what the life was like not just what the notes on the paper but what their things that they said uh, the kinds of uh, uh, life that they may have led and that this kind of thing gives you a better window into what it's like. I wanted to say one thing about you know you said that he, he's listening to you because he wants to play like you. Well good. <laughs> I think that's a good thing because you're a master, a master flute player. And I at that age, sixteen, um, I always tell uh, singers, you know, listen to the masters and, and learn from the masters. And yeah, you're gonna you're gonna imitate what you've heard, but then you, then I say, you know, listen to them, learn from them. Then you have to kind of stop doing that, and then you start finding your own. You will find your own voice. But it, it, I think it's common when you're young to listen to someone else and, and kind of sound like them for a while. Imitation. And they, imitation. That's how you learn. But then, but then eventually you're gonna. You don't want to sound just like somebody. You know, that, what happened when I started listening to Betty Carter because it was my first jazz person, and so I started doing everything like her, you know? And, and then, <laughs> ooh, I'm bad, you know? What, you can't play this? I have heard about her, she was tough, Cyrus. I know, I know a lot of people who played with her. <laughs> she was tough. But, I know, he scared you, I'm bringing back memories. But, um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, so I listened to her for a couple of years and then I was like, uh-oh, I'm, I'm sounding like her. And I realized I actually had to stop listening to her. And then, so then I opened my mind up and I listened to all these people, you know, and that, that, they all became part of me. But uh, any musician who's listened to any one of them, we all have, that's all becomes a part of your curricular language. <laughs>